especially. Oh, well, I will say the the Epic Series one, which is if it goes to five games, which could be possible well, with this uh, one. It's not even. It's going to happen. So it, it's, it's probably going to happen. happen. <laughs> Empress, it's going to happen. Um, uh, pretty much everyone I talked to, all the other competitive players going yeah. to this matchup too, said they felt like it would be a 3-2 game, yeah. uh, regardless of which way. They're all like, oh, TDM 3-2. Oh, Complexity is going to win 3-2, no matter who I ask for predictions. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what the good news is, too? You don't have to shave your head. Because well, yeah. it's well, not 3 nothing anymore. Yeah, so. I've, never, I've never done that before. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to today. <laughs> that's well, good news. That's, that's a relief. Oh, I know, right. Uh, all right. So, again, we are still waiting for the for the teams to uh, get settled in yeah. here. To oh, Actually, it looks like they, they might be good. I'm going to let them know that we are good. Yeah, sure. Uh, and see if we are going to be good to go here within the next minute. Yeah. Um, uh, it looks like if Beacon's good, I, I think we're going. So yeah, we're, we're in. There we Three, go. Two, you know, one, why yeah. wait when we don't have to, man? All right, so game number three officially upon us. We got Complexity Gaming taking on X Trademark Esports here in what is uh, a best out of five, obviously, tied currently at one game apiece. So Complexity this time once again on the Legion side, X Trademark on the Hellborn side. You know, we also mentioned earlier these two teams, their history, the record speaks for itself. It was eight to seven in favor of TDM when it comes to the individual games. Um, so very, very close, and well, again, we have a close series here. Wild Soul Artillery, the bands from Complexity, Moon Queen, and Ophelia coming out for XTDM. So, no Moon Queen for hacks, says uh, says my dots, and then he follows it up with deal with it. Oh, I love these teams, man. They they, they talk is a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, huge trolls on both sides, that's yeah. for sure. I know they've been going out together, chatting a lot too. So, well, if there was any bad blood in the past, I think they're, I think they're see, pretty much. See, uh, on that on that topic too, you know, obviously with with this event, with this event, we have a case of these teams getting together. You know, we have 20 players in total, really. You know, five mm -hmm. to five players from each of the teams, and you know they're coming together. And as I hope that you guys at home perhaps saw them either in the video production or the pictures, even with on the Honcast Facebook and whatnot. These, they're all they're all buddies in the end. I mean, the, we all love Heroes of New Earth, obviously. Uh, the fact that uh, these players, you know, get to even travel to a place like this because they they play Heroes of New Earth, yeah. obviously, pretty cool experience for them. And uh, they all they all seem to get along very well. So, uh, sure, when it comes to the matches, you know, they're here to win. Of course, they're here to compete against these guys. But uh, off of it, you know, they're definitely they're definitely having a lot of fun as far as you know, hanging out and just uh, just talking about you know, from Heroes of New Earth to just life in general. So. Um, just to kind of to clear that up as well. But uh, we are moving along here. What do we got going on? So we talked about the Blind Bands. Keeper of the First Lock, Tempest, Master of Arms, Rally Pebbles, and then Wretched Hag. So nothing uh, nothing too tricky here. Dead was the first band followed by Parasite so far. Yeah, it, it has been different style of lineup each game between these two teams. No one really running the, uh, the stay green strategy, so to speak. Where they try to always, pretty much always guarantee they'll have something like a war beast or a keeper or a wild yeah. solar tempest suicide, uh, and just uh, seeing those more, not I wouldn't say more aggressive, but just the the more lane oriented suicides instead. Mm -hmm. Zephyr fade on top of that dimension shaman. The next couple of bands and there's the feral band again. That's uh, again we saw the first game. Complexity ended up winning that one. Last game was picked up and <laughs> Complexity came with a losing end, but we did see a band again here. Uh, again, it's kind of a mix, I'm sure, of the, the fact that they, if they pick up Tempest, they don't want to go against a Pharaoh. And, and again, Moon does play a great, great Pharaoh on top of that. So uh, that's how the banning phase is going to finish off. And now you got Beacon looking at the first pick. You it know, is going to be Bubbles. I heard he actually hates playing Pharaoh, too, uh, for as well. Moon? I've given it, I've given it really? tons of praise, actually, in our yeah, past. No, he's I a great I've been Pharaoh player. Uh, having it uh, sort of be the standout Pharaoh of recent times in, yeah. in my book. And actually, apparently, he just doesn't even like playing it. That's interesting. Yeah, I can't say I've heard that, actually. But I've never, I guess I've never asked either. So <laughs> I just kind of yeah. assumed. I mean, he plays it all the time. So uh, that is interesting to hear, though. Well, the ball um, drafted here. I think uh, it's kind of a forecast as to what he's going to be mm -hmm. uh, left with in this game. Flux being highlighted. Is it possible? Yeah. You know, a lot of people I talked to said we're going to see Flux in this journey. The GSL, apparently, we were supposed to see Flux a lot, which we just saw it a couple times. But We did, we did. And, well, Engineer is still on the board, though, is the thing. True. I know Fitzky's favorite support hero in the game is Engineer. Uh, on top of the fact that it is incredibly powerful, it's just the one that he feels the most comfortable with. Yeah. There's also Devour. Oh, wait, this isn't Lions. Never mind. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, so the Flux uh, the Flux Engineer, uh, that could be possible. It's a deadly combination, no doubt. Engineer. Is it going to be that? There we go Flux. with the Engineer pick. Maybe. Nope. Okay, it's going to be nope, Magnus. But they actually still can pick Flux up if True, they want. True, yeah. Uh, Magnus being a suicide option, and they can get a jungle and, you know, solo, and they're good to go. 
yeah, seeing that complexity, you know, the chances of them picking up Flux, obviously, pretty, pretty little here. So, um, we'll see if maybe that's still an option or, or not. But, uh, you know, talking about Moomiander real quickly again, something that popped in my mind was, you know, think of, thinking of heroes that um, he, uh, whether or not he likes to play, I guess. But I remember when he first broke out of the scene, especially with the NASL event, obviously he do he's known as a great Tundra player, too. And uh, Tundra, a hero in general, we just uh, don't see anymore. Uh, it seems like he, in a sense, kind of went from god status even to uh, eventually just kind of just dying out. Uh, I, I can't recall necessarily. I mean, there was a change to his cold shoulder, I know. But uh, oh, I a, lot of, a lot of it has crazy. to do more with the metagame shift than the yeah. hero. I mean, the hero is great still. We've actually seen him banned out when playing against teams. Like, I think it was Afraid that used to run him quite a bit. Uh, teams that even consider banning him out there. Oh, Haxer and playing the Draconis. Yep. I well, haven't really seen that, that true, true hard carry uh, for Bid in the series. Draconis definitely filling those shoes. and Well, I, well we have saw the Moon Queen. I was starting to think. it's uh, <laughs> We saw the Moon Queen. Yeah. Uh, outside <laughs> of that, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if we see something like a Dark Lady make an go. appearance in this series. And, yeah, Flux is picked up. So, as you Should stated, be. yeah, that's going to be fun. Flux, I, I just love Flux, man. I, I've, I've always said that. he's. Just, I love playing him personally, too. It's just, like, he's just a really fun. I love his uh, magnetic search ability, his W. It's a very low mana cost, and it's great for spamming in the landing phase, especially for harassment and uh, even for denying and getting creep kills. And I've also seen some things uh, from the Southeast Asian scene. Speaking of the GSL event, I've seen cases of them using that ability to deny their creeps, basically, where they pull it away from the attacks of the, of the opponent. And then deny it, so kind of throwing them off. But yeah, uh, look at that synergy, man. I mean, they do get a Tempest and a Master of Arms on top. Aoe synergy team fight is definitely there for XTDM. You got complexity though. They went with the first pick keeper, and they finish it off with uh, with the rally there. So yeah, I do like that they put Master of Arms instead of rally though. They have a little bit more late game presence to sort of yeah. deal with the Draconis. On top, on top of that, Keeper of the Force initiation when you have a rally. Uh, can be pretty annoying to deal with because uh, mobilizes are very strong against rally and well, what better than a massive AOE mobilize? Yeah, uh, pretty much having no targets you can push back. So here we are. This is it, guys. Game number three again. Ooh, look at this, by the way. One of the I believe this is one of the Black Legion avatars. Oh, this is a really cool skin, actually. Um, the engineer one. He's uh, his turret. Uh, his abilities are all. The turret's like this red flamethrower, basically. Yeah. I think, and his energy field, I think, is red, actually. A lot cool. of people hail it as pretty much the uh, the coolest skin in the Black Legion side. Yeah. Look right there, he did cake the trees. Oh, I was too busy watching him, actually. No. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, he caked the trees. You know why he did that, right? Uh, oh, for the observatory? Yeah, just yeah. Uh, open up the observatory, which has always been a little interesting thing to me. I'll admit, Lane, I don't know. I, just <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> kind of questionable if the Hellborn has damage, access yeah. to it and that Legion doesn't. But either way, uh, can't fault the competitors for taking advantage of it. Yeah, it's just obviously both sides just – are gonna have uh, uh, advantages in the end. I mean, that's I, just I guess. I mean, <laughs> doesn't hurt. I yeah, Especially sure, sure. End. It's just a little weird thing that still exists. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out. This is like a flamethrower. Yeah, he's definitely holding a flamethrower. I always get so obsessed with I these <laughs> new skins like this. I, I've seen it like played before in TMMs, but I've never actually seen it like quite in a match. So. Yeah, I'm rolling it around. Anyway. Yeah, very very cool skin. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see him throw out that turret. Let's see what happens. I wonder if his spider mines are different too, actually. I hope they actually look the same. Anyways, enough of that. All right, so what do we see going on? Keeper of the Forest, as always, Riser setting up his animated trees, and it seems like he has the timing down pretty well. Uh, pulls them as soon as they spawn, basically, and he will get the full duration of that pull off. So good timing on his part. Look at uh, look at what XTDM's doing, though. They got the Master of Arms in near middle lane. They do have a short flux top, actually. Speaking of Flux, too, look at that. He actually gets two Crushing Claws to start. He's already at 739 life as the range strength here. So quite a bit of life. Well, playing the Iron Man Flux, by the way. Yeah, I'm just going to check. Yeah, no no pulled items or anything. Just go straight up against this bubble. Should do fairly well in this matchup. It's pretty good stats and can apply a lot of harass. He's actually attacking the bubbles even with a creep wave. <laughs> uh, full creep wave. Uh, yeah, feeling no hesitance there. Uh, still Moon Meander. Oh, no pulled regen himself either. Yeah. So I guess it's a fair trade. Ooh, middle lane actually rallies being boxed out pretty well right here. You got, uh, of course, again, Master of Arms and Engineer, double range combination. Definitely taking it to a rally at the bottom lane, though. It's an advantage for complexity as Franzi here on the loot is boxing out Zai quite a bit on Magmus, Suicide Mag. As, of course, that sets up Draconis for that free farm. Haxorin uh, just loves playing those right click hard carries, such as Moon Queen and Draconis, of course. 
and uh, plays it very damn well at the same time. So we'll see uh, how Draconis fares for him and complexity this time around. It's, it seems like it's actually been a little bit since we've seen Draconis, honestly. Um, it has. Uh, it's kind of a blur to me because I've been watching a lot of scrims, and I see yeah. teams pick him in scrims still. And True. I, I know it's been a while since we – had to, well, it's not been that long I since like, CSL, but... Yeah, I feel like I haven't said Cataclysmic Assault for a while, so... <laughs> Maybe it's that, I don't know. Well, he's definitely fallen out of flavor. Silhouette and Draconis both uh, fell out of flavor yeah. uh, quite a bit with the uh, recent shift. God, recent. Yeah. It's actually been a while now. Silhouette especially, yeah. yeah. Silhouette, it's uh, something you barely see these days. And, well, that was a hero that Noob G uh, in specifically was, was known for just dominating with. Oh, yeah. Ghost Marchers, Portal Key, yeah. Pretty good with that. And Bizroom going to be picked up by Engineer up here at the top lane. He's actually going top with it. We'll see if Moomiander might be in a little bit of trouble here. Of course, he has plenty oh, of definitely. getaway potential. But uh, depending on how XTDM sets this up, this could be possible, perhaps. Oh, definitely is. Definitely is. That slow is huge coming out. Oh, no. Oh, he shows her forward, though. So yeah, it's still an awkward good. spot. Actually, there's a Kex done. The turret's going to be placed on Look at the flamethrower turret. And Moomiander forced to go the other direction. Down goes Moom. Bloodlust kill. <laughs> Coming out for Limp right there, playing the flux. So yeah, great, great out. play, but even better uh, Fitzy there with the Invis Room. Did not expect him to come up from behind there. He's like, oh, yeah. dodge, your, uh, dodge your stomp. Nope, you're caught out. Exactly. That was Moon playing for a one versus one scenario, not a one versus two. So yeah. uh, great catch. The Invis Room, the Rune Control in general works out big time there. And, uh, that Rune was spotted, by the way. I was actually looking at that. It definitely was spotted, being picked up by Engineer. Oh, wow, wow, wow. With wow, that word aside, so actually, yeah. Whether it himself or you his team. You got to go back and look whether maybe neither he or his team noticed. Maybe they didn't expect him to come top. It's just, yeah. uh, well, if it's the other way, in the right place at the right time and having the one up there. Indeed, Trademark, indeed. Trademark, uh, so. winning the early game pretty much uh, all three games now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Of course, again, just like the first game, though, this game has the resemblance of, well, you're dealing against a Draconis at the same time. Sure. Just like the Moon Queen, the first game. I'm so. really excited, though. I, I always love seeing Flux Engineer. It's one of the more brilliant team oh, compositions yeah. in Heroes and New Earth. And combined with that Tempest as well, not only is Flux Engineer powerful, the uh, the Flux Tempest, man, that's not to be discounted either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, like I was saying, I, I've definitely always been a fan of Flux, just as a, both playing it and even watching it, and especially synergizing with that Engineer, a lot of fun. I, I miss the old school as well. I know Fnatic, when they were still around, used to love running that with the uh, Kraken, of course. Says, oh, you see right here, Bubbles actually taking a bit of pressure. He already used to take cover, actually. His shell surf is also shelter. on cooldown. Yeah, what's the uh -oh. cool? Oh, there it is. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yes, he it should be fine. Oh, geez, that was close. No. <laughs> wow. Limp is actually running. Gets creep blocked. He doesn't have regen. In the meantime, what's going on over here? Rally's going to be fork lightning. Magma is trying to get a range for the stun. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, though, so. No kills happening. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Zai trying to make that. himself useful. Still, he can sort of sneak toward and stop here. Uh, Bubbles does not have enough for a shell surf just yet. Needs uh, He has the mana now. Still, Zai going to play back maybe if he oh. baits out a shell surf or something. Yeah, but yeah. then again, Moomiander can kill the Flux with the proper shell surf as well. True. God, both of these guys living life on the edge, man. Yeah, favors uh, Bubbles a little bit. Has longer range on his new Zai now moving forward. Uh, going to try to box him out. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't matter. He doesn't have boots, so. Either way, it creates the pressure. It allows for Limp. Hopefully, yeah, the regen is flown out. He has an extra health potion to work with. And, oh, back he goes to farming. Yeah, and Sai also doing a good job there of at least tanking the creep wave long enough to make sure that the tower wouldn't aggro him. Instead, it goes to yeah. his own creep wave, yeah. and then he falls back. So, <coughs> But Flux, the ring of the T-shirt, the boots on top of that. How what? is that farm overall going, by the way? Well, yeah, how about this double damage ring that's been sitting top for, uh, oh, wow. for quite a bit now? Yeah. Chilling there. Uh, Tempest, uh, well, no, it's not going the bottle route. He does go the uh, Ring of Sorcery here, so could not necessarily bottle that up. But in fact, is there any bottles in this game? No, there isn't no. actually. <laughs> no bottles, okay. As we're now five and a half minutes in, so. Ring of Sorcery is flying out, and while well, the Hellborn Courier is not back to base yet, so still moving forward. <laughs> Draconis doing his thing though at the bottom line in the meantime. 36 and 23 for Haxron. 350 gold per minute coming out here for uh, Haxron. Playing the Draconis, Steam Boots, and Ring of the Teacher finished. Uh, Noob G playing the, the, again, the Master of Arms this time, unlike last game. Um, did just finish something. What did he just finish? His boots? Yeah, his Ghost Marchers here. Noob G going the Ghost Marchers, I know. Shocker there. Uh oh, what do we got up here? Bubbles, actually. Okay, yeah, he will show surf away in time. So this time he spots the, that pressure definitely coming. This could still very likely be a tower push, though, coming out from uh, 
from X Trademark. Tempest is up here with Flux and Magmus. He has a double damage rune on Tempest, too. And actually, just got delivered his boots right there, so. Yeah, Fitzky rotating towards top. Uh, checking the monitor if he already knew what the rune was, but he's just checking top. He's rotating top anyway. Going to try to go behind the tower here, uh, catch someone out, maybe get a kill and a push. Right. Tempest is moving past, and, well, not able to catch a Luna still. Fitzy, oh, he went to place the ward, but Franzi just placed his ward of sight. Oh. I expect that to get countered pretty damn quickly. Yeah, so the tower falls, but something else had happened while all that was taking place. I'm not sure. I caught the tail end of it, but... Root was used by Keeper of the Forest. I'm not. I didn't see anyone there though when it happened. So I don't know if a TP like just happened that I missed, which is probably the case. But uh, so the root used, not getting much out of it. But in the end, they do push the bottom tower. Flux ultimately gonna go off right there. Wants to pull at somebody uh, nearby, but not gonna be enough. So the discharge not gonna work out right there. Um, <laughs> able to apply a little bit of pressure to the tower though before falling back as a team. So. Uh, speaking of Keeper, though, he and Draconis are going to continue their push here at the bottom lane. At least for now. Engineer is still not level of 6, so they don't really have the fear of fighting an early team fight against that Flux NG either. Just still needs just a little bit more time. Yeah. Go per minute chart, looking pretty good for XTDM. However, Draconis is ultimately on top at 417 GPM. Uh, speaking of uh, Draconis, you always like to look at the jungle. It's got a, uh, at least one stack going on here. The Ancients currently just singled uh, for the time being, so... Obviously something, uh, well, never mind. Uh, but Master of Arms, he actually gets a Mighty Blade to follow up his Ghost Marchers. So I wonder if he's going to go now straight for that Shrunken Head. If not, uh, maybe just getting for the stats currently. Um, Keeper of the Forest, again, accidentally using that, or not even accidentally, but did use the root, didn't really get a kill out of it necessarily, but uh, it's already now only 20 seconds remaining, so. Okay, not the end of the world there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Keeper of the Forest level 8 compared to Irene level 6 compared to Tempest level 8 as well. Uh, Fitzky did get the ward down in mid, probably saw Franzi plays his, so while his ward got spotted out and Franzi countered it, the same will probably happen on the other side. Yeah. Striders just delivered a move. We talked about the last game. He just loves those boots. Uh, so gets it on bubbles here in this case. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's not often you see yeah. Striders on bubbles. And yeah, I think people make a bigger deal of it than it is. I mean, you still got extra gold to spend on stats, even if you choose to go striders for your movement-based item. And, well, given the suicide roll and being a little bit farm-deprived, it, it can make sense. Yeah. Uh, power supply just picked up by Flux in the meantime. Tavis running in right here. He wants to uh, do he something about it. He's in, sitting yeah. around. Uh, maybe we can try to nuke it. Uh, nuke all of them from the high ground. Nope. Going to the front here. And uh, possible fire brewing here. A lot of pressure being applied by uh, x -Trainer. They don't have Magmus with them. He's actually currently to the bottom side because Keeper and Draconis are pushing down here. Uh, are we going to see invulnerability port ins I feel like we are. There's the stun up from Magmus, but no port ins Oh, Zai's in a lot of trouble now. Zai's going to be gone. Oh. Demon Master's call coming out. We'll save for now. The Kek's not going to hit. Keeper the Force right there. Down goes Zai, though. And now Engineer may be in a little bit of trouble. But Tampa's yeah, actually running in. Keeper the Force is pull it with the Discharge. The Tempest Ultimate locking down Draconis. And yes, they will have enough damage, it looks like. Draconis is going to fall in the end. Keeper the Force, he will port out in time. That was very interesting, I though. feel like that Flux ultimate actually made it harder for Minots. I feel like he was going to go for the two-man elemental void. Looked like yeah. he had the positioning, and I feel like that pull actually threw him off. Uh, you're, so. you're right, actually. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, but very likely could have. So if yeah. anything, maybe he's saving the life of Riser right there. But that's where an ability like that discharge can be a little dangerous at times. Yeah. If you're not, uh, if you're not on the same page as every single one of your teammates there, which obviously can be difficult even for the best of them. So. Especially if you're not used to running the uh, the hero together a lot. True. Yep. By no means is this isn't a hero we see every game. So um, they did get the one kill though on Draconis. Now the tower was killed, right? Uh, I believe it was. I think my chat is actually bugged. Uh, oh, never mind. Yeah, Legion got the tower kill. Yeah. So looks like they did get that tower kill there. So good job for complexity, at least in that sense. Uh, Tempest in the meantime, uh, by the way, Minos playing Tempest for a third game in a row. I'm actually just realizing that <laughs> here in this series. Uh, all yeah, three games. Uh, oh, as I just got alt tapped for some reason. Well, it's been locked up sure every game, and about. people are going for that Keeper of the Forest first pick. And oh. oh, there you go. I don't know what that was about. Must have missed it a key. Anyways, uh, middle tower push. Deny maybe. No. I thought I saw Deny for a second. But nope, never mind. Down goes the tower. And in favor of X trademark. It's about to be a big, die, uh, big day for Zyman. He's about to hit level six. He's yeah. been roaming the, 
the map for a long time now, and he's finally beginning to pick up. Should be able to get his uh, boots upgraded here soon. Yeah, sorry, for the longest time we were seeing ghost marchers on Magmas, and it seems to be more the trend now to go for that tankier steam boots route in general. Uh, steam boots in gen uh, just across the board. Uh, yeah. Survivability has shown, especially going against these massive AoE lockdown team fight alties, uh, to be a little bit bigger. Surviving with 200 health, getting your volley of spells off, uh, way, way more important. See Rally just cleaning up the middle lane a little bit. He's still trying to finish his steam, but it's only farming 186 gold per minute currently. But look at Haxorin, nearly 500 GPM. That Null Stone is, uh, is definitely a coming. As we're now approaching 12 minutes mark. Nice deal by Engineer right there. He actually takes the haste room before Draconis could get to it. So good job by uh, by Fitzke, of course, for X trademark esports. And actually going all the way to the top side, but an Invis room going to be picked up. So I didn't even realize that, but I guess uh, he just picked it up right before that 12 minute mark. And that gives he's walking right by. Yeah, yeah, he's walking right by the Ward of Revelation. So <laughs> that's actually to yeah, his detriment if he doesn't realize it's there. Uh, Let's yeah. see if it's, he has another one. You know what? Flux ulti reveals. This could actually be true. Uh, this could be dangerous for him if they're perceptive as to where he might be at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, not really doing too much scouting, but it looks like he's going to take that invis rune back to the uh, far left hard camp and go back to farming. Yeah. Magmus, in the meantime, he is uh, taking advantage of the free farm up here that he's getting. Uh, he does hit level 7. He's got steam boots and they're 500 gold saved up. So it's starting to recover quite a bit here now for uh, for X Trademark Esports. Ooh, so Master of Arms, he went the uh, Mighty Blade first. Since then, he's gone two Quick Blades. So that obviously you can assume that a Null Fire Blade going to be worked on here mm -hmm. by uh, by Master of Arms. Flocks the Discharge. There comes the Q coming out on top of Aluno. A couple more auto attacks down goes Franzi. Limp getting credit for the kill, the release ability, of course. Uh, coming up for Flux right there. Yeah, only uh, <laughs> 10 seconds left before a Luna revives. They still might be able to stage a defense here, but it does not look like Complexity's interested. Yeah. Just going to push up the mid lane and set, say, screw it, let that one go, cut our losses, and move on. Engineer's level 6 now, too. Uh, again, that's definitely a big point for XDM, specifically with that combination, him and Flux. For sure, for sure. We'll see if that comes into play here in the near future. Obviously, the Flux discharge is on cooldown for another 60 seconds, it looks like. Not that long of a cooldown. It's only it's 100 seconds right now. It gets all the way down to 60 seconds, it looks like, at level 3. But, yeah, you made a good point there. It actually it does reveal as well as it does see in the text there, too. So, Yeah, well, and, okay, we were talking about the Nullfire Blade. Great pickup there by Master of Arms. He's going against the Keeper of the Forest. Purge, not only uh, a great offensive tool, being able to purge off the uh, the root off yourself or one of your allies, huge. On top yeah. of that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can purge off Cataclysmic Assault by Draconis before... He has his uh, um, shrunken head, and also on top of that, it's another way to break the null stone. I think so. You can. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, okay. No, you can. Yeah, I know we've talked about that before. I thought that this has been brought up before. Pretty sure you can even <coughs> purge off the uh, the blazing flight. Yeah, that that I know you can purge. Yeah. Um, Flux just got his portal key. Uh, obviously, that could help even more for the engineer. Flux combination. He's going back to base currently. And there you go. Gets it delivered. Tempest, level 11. Has the Astrolabe. Ghost Marchers actually picks up a major totem there. So, again, my notes here. Plays Tempest all the time. It varies in his builds. He went the straight portal key last game. This game, going more of that, you know, more support build here um, for the team. So, I mean, he doesn't need to jump in. He's got the he's got that Flux edgy combo yeah. he's sort of relying around on. Still, I do think a portal key in combination with the Flux blink. Uh, and the pull together can't be very effective, but right now uh, doesn't need to really worry about it. Uh, Keeper of the Force is probably going to be forced to use his root one way or the other anyway in these team fights, thanks yeah. to this powerful team fight combination of Flux and Engineer. And it's probably just playing on sitting back and offering that team support and durability. Draconis not really farmed up enough now. They don't have enough for us to truly make an impact if they get thick enough at this point. Haxorn in the meantime, uh, again, 465 gold per minute. We are going to have a vote to pause here, it looks like, coming out from... Uh, from trademark, X and, trademark. Uh, well, look right as the pause happens. Oh, jeez. Riser is spotting out Magmus, and uh oh, <laughs> who's nearby? It's just a, it's a rally. You got the level huh. one ultimate from Keeper. It just depends on where where Zai moves from here. <laughs> uh, he's gonna have fun about it. Um, yeah, so apparently uh, a screen or a blue screen happened. So Noob G looks yep. like he was the victim. He is a. Uh, in the middle lane with his team, but uh, obviously that's a benefit about being in a lane. If it happens like that, technical difficulty, you usually realize right away. 
that something happened. So, uh, Votapaz here, and again, going to get that restarted and back into the game. Sure, we'll yep. be fine. Uh, that, you know, I don't want to jinx us by any means, but things have been flowing pretty nicely. We really haven't had to deal with too many pauses, so which is a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the earlier series, we had, we had a couple. You know, they're gonna happen. But sure, sure. Um, it's the first one of this series, at least. So, and here we are in game number three. Again, this is a one-to-one -one series right now, obviously, between Trademark Esports and Complexity. And then we have a lot of people over here, and again, what we're, what's really the practice room uh, between so the other teams even that played earlier today, whether they're just uh, still just playing around, and also some guests that, that are here just kind of just hanging out. That seems pretty well packed. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you know what I would like to see? What's that? Rally, he's charging up the Seismic Slam, right? He's getting ready, about to kill, I don't know, say, say some super relevant hero here. So he's about to kill Master of Arms, okay? Yeah. Uh, he's charging up the Seismic Slam right as he's about to come down. Flux activates the uh, the the Discharge ultimate or the reverse. Is it, is it is it Discharge when it's pushing them away, isn't it? Uh, reverse Polarity? Or is it still Discharge? Does it swap names? I've never actually noticed that. I, no, I couldn't tell I, you, actually. I'm pretty, it's probably the same. Either way, uh, pushes him back. He just barely misses the ultimate as it goes through. Uh, huh. Thanks to the pushback, he saves him. Master of Arms comes around and wins the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Uh, <laughs> so Caxman actually had to use a restroom right there. Oh, did he? So, yeah. Uh, he was leading to the restroom by by uh, one of our admins. Actually, it looks like Milk Vet was, uh, took him over there. Of course, had a land setting. Want to be a little careful with that, but, you know, made sure. With the right direction. Anyways, uh, so again, if you are just doing it once again, uh, earlier today we did have a our first series. State Green took out Lion Esports Club three games to nothing. Thus, they are in the championship match tomorrow. They play the winner of this matchup, uh, which again the time for that 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2200 Central European time. That is the time for the championship match. But before that is actually the third place match, of course. Uh, that starts at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, let's see. That would be 1800 Central European time. So that's going to be Lions versus the uh, losing team of this series, of course. Um, but again, still a lot of money on the line. Four thousand dollars difference on the line between these uh, between the third place match teams. So, uh, but this yeah. one is definitely obviously the championship match. There's forty-eight thousand dollars total compared to the twelve thousand yeah. between the two teams. So, and is still not back yet. Hopefully, uh, everything's going fine with his. <laughs> Reconnect attempt here. Yeah. Sure. Uh, just gonna figure it out quickly, and then uh, we'll be good to go. In fact, there you go. Starting to load back in. I know. I know. Uh, Hacker is actually back. Ghosting, right? <laughs> <laughs> WZA is cool with it though. It's, it's all good. WZA, oh. of course, uh, giving us a little bit of a insight into what's maybe on the patch. The uh, drunken what, what master that? change. Yeah, I the drunken master said, change. Yeah. Uh, that's well, it's uh, been a while since we've seen that hero. That's that guy, uh, he was fun initially, I remember, but he got some nerfs because his initial state was pretty, was pretty powerful. It was early, <laughs> early 2012 was the last time he truly was on the scene. Yeah, and uh, all of a sudden, around <laughs> the time of the tank meta, and I think he is the most inactive hero actually. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which is why, you know, that change is really good. Let's see the hero usage stats. Oh, he's well. Trembles the <laughs> least used. It looks like. Look at that oh, win percentage. Thirty-nine point seven. That has to be the lowest win percentage. Oh no, Kinesis is actually lower. Man, that's brutal. Wow. <coughs> wow. Yeah, Anyways. Kinesis is thirty-seven percent. Jeez. Yeah. Damn. Damn. So look, Kinesis. Anyways, here we are. We are back in the game, of course. Complexity versus X Trademark Esports. As we are tied at one game apiece. <laughs> yeah. Sorry there. Got to keep hydrated, folks. I know it's getting later on in the, in the European crowd. Uh, so those from uh, from the European region, especially that are tuning in viewers, especially on a weekday here, being the Wednesday night or Thursday morning, whatever you want to say, definitely shout out to you guys, as to all our viewers, of course. Uh, this has definitely been an event in the making for such a long time. Excited to finally be here. Uh, you, uh, you know, we definitely got up to a little bit of a rocky start earlier on with a couple of difficulties in but in the end, once we've got the matches starting to flow, I think uh, we've definitely pulled it off. And here we are. What's well, been a great series so far. And things have been going oh, mass well. TPs coming out from Trademark. Yes, they are. Rally's going to compel away just in time. Though. It looks like there's the discharge. So not the best of follow-ups yet, whatever. But in the end, it looks like at least Rally will fall. Keeper of the Force going to survive, however. Engineer, I don't know if he just didn't have The courier. 
the ultimate. What's that? Lance is going after the courier. Oh, wow. He doesn't have the port. <laughs> he doesn't have the tablet. There's so he's not going to be able to chase it down. Jeez. Yeah. That could have been big. If he had a portal key or maybe even a tablet, that courier was looking pretty grim. Yeah. That, that could have been. I mean, that's 1,100 gold right there. That could have just been lost by being. Well, and the courier and the gold, the Tempest gains, and the yeah. whole pain of having to go rebuy one. And this is a whole. And the morale. Yeah. And it's like, our courier just died. Oh. <laughs> It does suck. So, Flux but ulti, man, that's, that's, that's really strong, actually. When teams are attempting to flee, when they're pushing towers, it pulls them back in. All these yeah. pull back in, it also reveals them, if they, even if they're invisible. Yeah, it's kind of like the Kelfield presence from Bubbles with the, the tower push. Yeah, it is. Like it that. is. It really is. Yeah, where it's uh, great for, you know, setting up those TPs to come in. And well, especially now that uh, Magnus is nearing his portal key, the, the effects of that will be amplified. Yeah. I was, again, I was, I'm not exactly sure of the, the reasoning of the situation why the – Engineer ultimate wasn't placed, whether it was just simply he was out of mana or if he chose to just do the Kexon instead. I, I'm not exactly sure, but obviously there was no Engineer ultimate there. Uh, but on top of the Flux I have to go back and but watch at this point. They did get the kill again on the Rally. Keep it the Force, so though, able to make the escape. Okay. Uh, What's up? Yeah, we, we do see Trademark. They're doing pretty well, but still the game is really, really close in spite of it being 1-4. to four. Draconis is farming an impressive 465 yeah. and climbing GPM. Uh, from here on out, yeah, okay. Master Arms, he's at 336. Tempest, who is breaking 400, is a Tempest in the end. Uh, not a hard carry. We do got action right here on that Draconis again. He's, yeah, I, I kind of did forget about him. You tend to do that with Draconis. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, he's farming whatever. Not back occasionally, so he jumps back an extra 100 gold yeah. per minute every 10 minutes or so. And yep. well, that's just about all you assume. Savage Mace, obviously, the the biggest benchmark for the hero, Shrunken Head. A very, very vital pickup, especially when you're going against a Flux NG combination. You really, really, really need it. Yeah. Portal key on Keeper of the Forest. Um, that, uh, of course, gives uh, X trademark keys, or excuse me, complexity, a big uh, initiation chance, uh, or initiation presence, really, against this help warranty. And the No Fire Master, the Portal key also on Flux, of course. Engineer level 8. Magnus Portokey, you mentioned that. He was getting close to it. He definitely has it now. So, Team Fi definitely coming together pretty nicely here for X Trademark Esports. And they're going to somewhat, no, they're probably going to start falling back here. In fact, Tempest, yeah, going, going back and forth. Dex, he just finishes his Tablet of Command right there. Going to apply some pressure to this base tower. They do know, obviously, Beacon is at the top lane. Uh, you do have Draconis farming the Hellborn jungle. So, this could be a... Free tower kill, however, they all do have homecoming stones, so it's going to be interesting to see if Complexity looks to defend this tower or not. Yeah. No signs of it. There yeah. you go. Going to let it fall. Oh, middle lane, actually, give the force a little bit of trouble. Are going to see a flux ultimate, perhaps, with that discharge. Tempest jumping in, the steam bath, no. Portal key from Keeper, and he will be oh, fine. Oh, he cancels so. it, though. Just going to sort of round oh. up and head towards the top lane. They're going to kill the top tower. I don't know if they're going to look for. Uh, Continue the push here. It looks like they're drawn back just a little bit. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just gonna steal some neutrals. It looks like. <coughs> so 20 minutes into this game right now, four to one hero kill game. So obviously, uh, again, when it comes to hero kills, not the most intense game ever. But uh, that Draconis getting dangerous, continuing to do so. 512 gold per minute now. How many Black Legion just finished off rally? By the way. There's the shrunken head under Kodas and pretty good timing because we could have a big fight coming up right here. Boomiander gonna get locked down. Boomiander will fall. Great portal key jump from XTDM. Just simply catching him off guard. Not only will they get the bubbles kill, but that'll probably be an easy tower kill now. Where if, uh, if they didn't kill him, I mean, we could have been seeing something completely yeah. different here. So yeah, now to fight 4v5 in a game like this against a uh, powerful ulti combination too, like Engineer, Tempest, and Flux. So just gonna let that one go and Back to push it back to lanes. Oh, a little bit bittersweet though there. Keeper managed to take out the top tower by yeah. himself. Uh, you know, good bouncing huh. out. Y you know what that goes back to? Uh, you mentioned he stopped his TP. He was TPing out, but he's like, no, I'm going to stay up here actually. And help Draconis push a little bit more. And well, a minute later, less than a minute later, the next tower is dead. So able to make up for staying up there. So good job by Riser. Magnus he's in the top lane. Rally is coming out. He's invisible and he's going to get the uh, the jump onto the Magnus. Is he going to go? There he is. The Capel, the seismic slam tears through Magnus and Zai will fall. So a uh, good setup there. Again, the Nature's Veil, vale. just a powerful utility tool, man. I mean, it's just all across the board. The great, great ability, of course. And Well, obviously the invisibility, a big part of it too. So. 
Sets it up for uh, for Beacon right there, playing the rally. And yeah. Well, from here on out, we're looking at that Savage Maze pickup being the next defining moment for Complexity's lineup. Until then, it's this trademark's job to try to pressure the team fights or push the team fight situation as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, prevent Draconis' evolution into the late game. Uh, you might remember uh, Say Green. They used to be their go-to hero before artillery. Uh, not their go-to hero, the go-to hero that they would ban, I should say, and blind ban alongside yeah. Moon Queen before artillery really became a presence. Huh. Yeah, I guess you're right, huh? That's, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd always say those are the two heroes that, <laughs> in whatever the situation, they can prevail and carry. Yeah. Uh, Draconis being known for his massive AoE potential with that fiery barrage, uh, with the cataclysmic assault, and just all of his spells in general, just doing a ton of work in team fights. Yep. Uh, so, again, as you put it, though, for this game, 544 gold per minute, but Tempest, it seems like he always is uh, at least nearby, too, and he is working on the Restal Stone. He actually has the Arcana finish, so a uh, good part of it made right there. Once he gets that Restal Stone, having that double ultimate presence, very powerful. Obviously, you got to keep the force over here on Complexity, who uh, only has the one route right now. He is a little bit, little bit more behind that Tempest as far as the farm is concerned, but still farming very well himself with that said. As Riser is at 300, 340 gold per minute. Level 2 Nullfire Blade was purchased by Noob G, by the way. Playing the Master of Arms. It was, it was. Trying to upgrade that. Again, he purchased the Mighty Blade first and then did all this yeah. after. We've seen that. Well, a lot of times you see Firebrand first into the Trunken yeah. Head. Not usually you see uh, the Mighty Blade. And actually, doesn't have a lot of mana in this game. Relying on that Tempest String of Sorcery a lot. No, no Energizer, no Steam Boots, no Power Supply. <laughs> it seems like yeah. he's uh, sort of missing all the farming tools you usually see on a Master of Arms. Mana regen, very slow, very slow. Um, he's gonna fall back to base with that set. Actually, have to clean up the ancient. Speaking of ancient, Draconis was doing the ancient, but here, yeah, breaking. there we go. Keep the that pick coming in on top of the cap on the side. Let's see the other sun, and down goes Tempest Flush. He's gonna try to discharge away. Not gonna happen. Oh, the master call saving him a little bit, but just too much damage. He never got the discharge off. Maybe he thought he was dead a lot sooner, but big couple of kills coming out there for complexity. Yeah, he, w he went away for the Ancients, and that sets up a couple of kills for the team. Yeah. And now back to the Ancients. Yeah, back to the Ancients. So. Uh, Keeper Alti is down, but not for long. Uh, Draconis is able to afford his Slayer at this point, and, well, Savage Mace not looking too far down the road. Yeah. I Oh, boy. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's scary news for, uh, for XTDM. That's Savage Mace Draconis. Again, it's been a while. Mortal Key on like Rally, too. Yeah, having that jump now themselves. Um, obviously, Keeper showed his power, and in fact, Keeper now he is one step closer towards his Resto Stone. So we mentioned Tempest having that Arcana and then getting there, but Keeper maybe even pulling ahead as far as the pace of the Resto Stone here. But when you look at it, so double damage being picked up by Master of Arms in the meantime. They're gonna go for a Ninja Congor here. I don't yeah, think Complexity no, sees this. There's no read on it. Like, yeah, interesting, interesting. Oh, this is big. This is huge if they really get this Conquer kill, which I think they are. Uh, this will probably go to Master of Arms here. He's also very close to a shrunken head on top of all this. And yes, 100% Conquer kill. There goes the tree at the last second, but by the oh, time he gets the there. Head right there. There you go. There's the shrunken head, the token life though. as well. They need to fight. They need to fight. They need to fight. Draconis. Yeah. I oh, yeah. ever closer to the Savage Maze. They have the Keeper to sort of deal with this Tempest a little bit further. And as you mentioned, in the progress towards the Restoration Stone, Keeper is, uh, well, just barely, barely ahead of him. Yeah, very true. So 25 and a half, really 26 minutes into this game right now. Uh, it's uh, bottom lane. XDM, this is maybe their no. chance. Uh, not really. They fall back before anything too much happens. But yeah, that Savage Mace is getting very, very close. A level 16 Draconis. So uh, they're not going to force the issue just yet, though, despite having that token that they just got. Wanted to let it uh, make work a little bit. 1,900 gold on Tempest. I kind of wonder if they really just want to make sure to get him that Resto Stone, too, before they uh, go all out. But speaking of Tempest, actually, oh, my needs to be careful. The Capel misses, actually. Demoral this world will prevent the portal key. Oh, he doesn't have one. What have I said? Anyways, trying to turn something around. But actually, the Discharge pushes Rally away. And so it doesn't end up being a gank attempt, or a successful gank, I should say. It ain't over just yet, though. Uh, maybe it is. Oh, I don't not. know. Never that. mind. Bubbles jumps the in. Angle. There we go. The Kelp field on top of the second. Let's see. Master's call. Oh. Tempest on a Tempest. You see Rally again going in right there, but Tempest gets talented away. Going to be fine. Magma's portal yeah, king they find in. the window. No, it doesn't look like it. 
Yeah, both teams sort of uh, initiating, backing off, reinitiating on each other. Uh, Flux going to find the Keeper of the Forest here in the river, but uh, Keeper of the Forest opting to back on out. And uh, meanwhile, Draconis, we talked about that Savage Mace, getting that solo kill onto the mid tower. Yeah. A lot of creep kills in general going to the neutrals, and we'll finish up that 3,200 gold that he needs just in a sec here. Draconis is the least amount of hero damage done this game at 4%. Once he gets a Savage Mace, I expect that number to change quite a bit. Uh, really, uh, especially in those team fights, he gets a cataclysmic assault off. Obviously, he's still sitting on full 10 seconds of the shrunken head yet to use it. Yep, TDM, XTDM, they uh, they are kind of grouped up here in the middle lane. Looks like they may be going for a bit of push. You know, something I don't even know. I don't think we've seen an engineer ultimate yet, let alone the combination. I I, I actually don't think Fisk has used that to energy field yet. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Draconis, Draconis uh, uh, I don't know though. They just haven't found the right opportunity. Lanes have been split pushed. They've been avoiding fights. I don't know what you can exactly uh, place it on, but either way, yeah. it's. It ain't happening. Oh, see, this is actually. Well, I'm not going to say it's good. It's kind of bad if he actually oh. does finish his Savage Mace, but he's not going to have buyback if he doesn't uh, yeah. misplay in a team fight. It's going to open it's the door of opportunity for Trademark. It is interesting. What is Haxer going to do here? He's still pulled up on that gold right now. Does he, does he go all in with that purchase, or does he save for the buyback? I mean, the push isn't too intense by any means by X Trademark, so. Looks like, uh, and in the end, XTDM is actually just going to fall back, so, yeah, not going to risk it. Uh, XTDM will go ahead and go back and clean up uh, Complexity's Ancients in the meantime. Fitzge is level 11 now, by the way, as well, so even though we haven't seen an energy field yet, he does have a level 2 energy field now, which, uh, of course, can be big. Shrunken Head being worked on by Flux, by the way, too. Trying to finish that himself. Master of Arms, uh, it does finish his shrunken head. So it's not for a little bit. He gold. does. He's just still, uh, in spite of a strong early game, is falling off drastically compared to the Zirconis. We saw it with the Zephyr. Uh, you know, the game like seemed kind of even or seemed kind of close, but just the overwhelming disparity when uh, yeah. it was trusting that game with the Bird. He had like 600 gold from it. The highest carry on the enemy team was 370. They just could not keep up. It didn't matter that his team was a little bit weaker. Man, Keeper and Tempest, they're, they're like neck and neck when it comes to this gold race of the Resto Stone. They're pretty much going to get it at the yeah, same, same time, time same fight. They'll be busting it out. Yeah. Well, it, it does favor the Keeper of the Forest usually a little bit in that matchup. But yeah. yeah, he's still able to do quite a bit while sitting back, and he's usually the one that waits. But we'll see how that plays out. 4,400 gold now under Konis. There's a standard purchase by Keeper, at least, so. Let's take this now himself. Uh, but yeah, 4,400 gold. I don't know the exact amount that he will need to make sure that he has the buyback on top of the. Well, uh, apparently it's right there. So he buys the two Warhammers. No, he, he sold them. Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> so he was just uh, he felt like he was a little short after that purchase. Like, so. Do I have buyback? I don't have buyback. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Not worth it. Not worth it. Not worth it. He's like, this is the only way we can lose. This is the only way we can lose if I buy my Savage without buyback. Wind up dying and then get pushed on. So. I'm uh, not going to give him that chance. I'm just going to play it safe. It won't be long here, though. There's a couple more creep camps, and he's good to go. Yeah. Just over 30 minutes into this game right now. It's the golden experience overall is very even, but obviously there's a lot more sides to that story. Specifically, the Draconis here for complexity. 600 gold per minute. Haxrin, he is a farming machine today. Obviously, uh, playing the Moon Queen the first game. Retro the the last game, and... He did, he, did, he did well that game, but obviously the losing effort there. But Draconis this time around back over that 600 gold per minute mark. So, cleaning up some more Ancients right there. Uh, there we go. Now he's feeling confident. He purchases the two Warhammer, so Savage Mace is going to be on the way here for Draconis. There's the Restal Stone for Tempest, though, and it's got to be coming up shortly now for Keeper as well. As I know, he already has a sustainer, so. Yeah, he's got the goal. is 200 more. Uh I don't know, man. The only thing they have going for him is really this Nullfire Blade. Uh, not the Nullfire Blade, I meant the token. Sorry, I was looking at the True. wrong item. Total slip there. Well, but, uh, Nullfire's yeah, good too. No, no, no. But it's okay. It's the one way to take off one of the, uh, the, the roots. Yeah, sure. But no, yeah. it's the it's the token of life coming out here for the Master of Arms. Uh, working on a Savage Mace of his own. Just going to go huh. all in here uh, with that Slayer. Wants the extra DPS. And I guess feels confident with his... Uh, oh, oh, Jerkona is going to get picked right here, maybe. No, the eruption not in time. Look at the turnover with the Cataclysmic Assault. The auto attacks, Tempest and Magmas both forced to fall back. Oh, man, he was hoping Tempest could have followed up with a stun or even an ultimate in time, but he just couldn't get there. 
That could have set up a lot right there, but. Well, he's still a buyback, as you mentioned. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is nice to get a pick off. They use a buyback. That's yeah, that'd that'd be big. Easy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But he survives. Obviously, they did get him to use the shrunken head, which That's will it. be on cooldown for another 50 seconds here. Let's see again his ward down here in the middle. They might look to make a jump right here, Breaky. Yeah, engineer off mm. to the side. He doesn't have any PK himself, so he's not going to be jumping in necessarily. But Flux is ready to go with his PK, and uh, as long as Engineer's nearby, so he'll set up the ultimate. Restoration bit. Stone is up, but he doesn't have a portal key. He doesn't have a shrunken head. It's uh, that's true. Kind of moral. <laughs> that is it, it, it yeah, is awkward. It's, a, it's, it's different. It's a lot more awkward. Yeah. Wow. You're right. <laughs> You're so used to seeing the portal key on Tempest, with, especially with the Resto Stone. Yeah. Well, you see a tablet in a case like this, and a little refresh tablet's always strong. Yeah, great yeah. positioning tool in these fights. It, uh, it's still not something we're used to running across. No, it's not. That's, uh, that is very interesting, actually. So token down on Master of Arms, gonna be up in a few more minutes here, and well, they can come take it again there. But yeah, it's still Draconis, uh, three thousand three hundred extra gold now on top of that Savage Mace, and. Mm -hmm. Well, his farm's been ticking about the same, hovering around that 600 range. It's still very, very scary to deal with. Yeah, I think it's safe to say this is this is more so complexity space right now that they want to be in this game of uh, how it's going. So XTDM, again, it's obviously it's easier for us to just say it, but Dracodis um, uh, is level 20, man. <laughs> I mean, he's five levels higher than your master of arms, three levels higher than anyone on your team. On top of the uh, obviously the intense farm that he has, 600 gold per minute now. Obviously, we saw yeah. the game one what the Moon Queen was able to do. To, to do. Um, now this isn't as intense of a support team around that Moon Queen, that's for sure. But it is still it's actually a great team fight team for him with that cataclysmic assault, of course. So yes, the root, the ball, the kill field, yeah, very nice abilities for helping out Draconis quite a bit. Ooh, Master of Arms pushed up slightly here. Not gonna go too far though. And we'll fall back in the end, it looks like. So, again, it's been yeah, a... I'm sure Complexity doesn't mind letting this game go later and yeah. later and later. Again, it's, it's their pace at this rate. Much so to their advantage, yeah. Obviously, as we talked about that game one, it's a little bit slower early on, too, but it definitely started to pick up. And, and very strong game two. Pretty much action the whole game, honestly. And then here we are in game three, and definitely having back to more of, a, more of the passive gameplay, unfortunately. But, again, a lot is on the line here, so... Play, uh, playing yeah, to win as these teams I'm sure Minus wants that trunken head. Yeah. Uh, not too far off, but. He's actually in the Legion jungle right now, kind of clearing it out, but should be fine here. Uh, Resto Stone on Keeper, of course. So he's got that double root himself to work with. There's the Whispering Helm purchase on Draconis, by the way. So he's going to eventually work towards that. I heard a portal key, but not really for much. Other than some counter warding going on from Moomy Ender right there. Yeah, double damage room being camped. Bitsy has to be careful though. Uh, Complexity is in the area. Yeah, he just decides to pick it up himself and run with it. Definitely the smart move there from Bitsuke. As he uh, ports back to base. But here we go with the middle push. Now Draconis kind of leading the way here. In a blazing flight and putting some auto attacks. But uh, I think it's safe to say uh, XTDM probably suspects a bait opportunity right here. <laughs> Yeah, Master Arms looks like he's going to be there to either hide or port into the middle and join them for this team fight. Noob G kind of thinking about what to do here, waiting for when he maybe sees complexity. But as we can see on our mini map, complexity has fallen back. Noob G's pointing in the middle lane, and here they are heading over to Congor. Remember, they ninja it earlier. Uh, there is this ward of sight, though, from Franzi. Engineer's actually going to go counter it. Oh, he doesn't see it, it's on the hill. So he actually ran right past it, and Complexity probably has a decent idea that something's going on this time, although I don't see any scouting going on it just yet. Complexity, they got a Luna with the power throw up in 10 seconds for the red path throw, but they are running over. And trademark, X trademark is very aware of that, it looks like. So this one, not as easy as the first Conqueror attempt. For uh, I, XTDM. I see the three shunken heads coming out uh, <laughs> for this Draconis. Uh, Another item that can be pretty good against Draconis is Barbed Armor. Forced uh, to oh attack yeah. many targets with that split and the AoE magic damage he can put out. Uh, can really cause him to sort of well, melt right through himself. Yeah. Especially when you're looking at a team fight heavy team like uh, like Trademark, maybe a Barbed Armor could be of some high use. Going back into the Congor pit. You see the No Fire play doing some work right there. For Master of Farms, but Complexity starting to move in. Beacon in the front lines on Rally. 
He's looking for a chance to maybe go in. Hellflower just finished on Magnus, by the way. Big pick up there. He's sitting off to the side currently. Looking to get an eruption initiation chance. Oh, there we go. Uh -oh. Really jumps and misses the compel. This could be a big star. Tempest, the auto attacks for Draconis. He already activated the circuit head. In the back, we see Magnus done and actually by Zai now. Needed to tap it up. Oh, he avoids the Kelpin right there. So both teams not losing a hero. Just Death Flux jumping in. There's the discharge, but they're just a little bit too far away, it looks like, in the background. Rally uh, going to help lock down Magnus. Let me all up here. Flux going to be pounded on. The Cataclysmic Assault for Dakota's actually not up just yet. He's just putting a regular auto attacks. And now he's being locked down. Magnus down the turn on top of that. The energy field is down, but Dakota will stay alive barely. It looks like Hatrick coming out for Axerin and make that another kill. Genocide for Complexity. They did not lose a single hero right there. Oh man, that seems like it seems like XTDM tried to force that. Yeah, too exactly. Much. Went too far. Flux uses ultimate on the chase. They've already been ranged for the engineer. Uh, really caught a position. Keeper of the forest responded with that root. Dracones was there, laying in the auto attacks, completely tore apart everyone, and well now finishes his oh, symbol of rage. Uh, 13k experience, 7k gold, uh, restoration stone down for Tempest. Keeper did use his as well, but that's fine. That's fine. They took a major team fight. They have a token now. On the big bad dragon. Yeah. Um, one step closer to victory at this point, making this a 2 to 1 series in favor of complexity. Yeah, again, like I said, it's just overextension there from, from XTDM. They really wanted to force that issue, and it did not pay off at all for them. Well, overextension might happen again here. Flux Ultimate's up in nine seconds. Uh, Tempest is reviving in 10, and if they stay too long, yeah. potentially at risk of losing a team fight here in the Hellborn base. It's gonna get interesting. Now, he doesn't have a homecoming stone, does Tempest, so. Gonna, obviously, he's going to resurrect right here. Here we one. go. Draconis does have the token of life, of course. Going to blazing fight away. It looks like as Flux boards in. It pulls him in right there with the discharge auto attacks. But look at that turnaround. Kind of close. Mega Sonic. Draconis is doing so much damage. Magnus will fall. The tap is holding him coming out, but it might just be a little bit too late. Draconis is well alive. The energy field doing a little bit of work right here. But Flux and Magnus are already dead. And Draconis is still well, well alive. He still has a symbol. He still has the damn token of life. He's now going to pound into the melee racks. XTDM on their last hope right here in Jumps Bubbles. Tab it away from Tempest. I think we could be seeing Complexity maybe, uh, maybe make it a final touch here. If XTDM has anything yeah, to say about it. Yeah, we talked about uh lineup being on a timer. It's uh, clearly showing its age here. Uh, melee racks down. They can uh, sort of just position back, wait for the restoration cool, uh, stone cooldown on Keeper. They still have the token up under Conus. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much everything going their way right now. Yeah. Yeah, 22 or more 100 gold on Dracon is ridiculous. 620 there. gold per minute. Yep. He gets to that point again. We saw just another an example right there of just the, the power of him. Uh, I know the magnetic surge was also nullified by the uh, null stone, but again, the reason for that, especially, is the discharge can also be deactivated by null stones. Mm -hmm. um, so. Obviously, his idea was he knew that and wanted to be able to use a discharge on him, but still, it didn't matter. Nah, not at all. And uh, Hellfire just purchased by Bubbles in the meantime. Obviously, Congor not going to be up anywhere in the near future. Flux in the area, but Token of Life still on Draconis for another four and a half minutes here. And XTDM, it kind of feels like they're in that, that desperation spot of we need to try to pick a fight here, maybe get that, that lucky pick, the nice pick more so, and uh, try to work off of that. But... Obviously, complexity feeling comfortable, I'm sure, and at least ideally not going to put themselves. Yeah, in as as long as they have buyback under Conus, they have nothing to fear going into these team fights at all. Yeah. They should walk in with full confidence. Uh, they have no problem forcing things, making them happen. It's just it's one thing to watch out, watch for the positioning for the Tempest yeah. Ultimate. It can be pretty grim, especially with the uh, the discharge. But as long as they keep that in mind, watch sure. Uh, how is Master of Arms been coming along? Okay, he is getting close to that Savage Mace himself. Not explosive. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, the curse, man, the curse. Master of Arms is going to be jumped right here. He will be fine, though. Hellflower on top of the kill field, but Bubbles is starting to turn around. Too much of a. Uh, trademarks right here, there. man. They're moving forward. Yeah, Draconis is not hanging out happen. there, but yeah, not going to catch him there. Uh, Tempest does have double ulti in 30 seconds. Definitely would like to wait for that, I'm sure. As far as. Uh, their tactics go. For now, though, they'll have to kind of start porting back and, well, Master of Arms pushing out the top lane. He should have a Savage Mace at this rate. It's, well, I guess it could be a question. Does he want to save it for buyback? It's probably not. Just wants to get that old incense of, we need these big items. Having a buyback might not do too much in the end, so. Although he's still saving up a little bit here. Uh, but bottom lane, Draconis, level 23 Draconis again. Haxion doing big work here. 
pushing now that bottom lane. You got XTDM setting up the defense. Uh, double Tempest Ultimate is ready. Okay, there's the buy of the Savage Mace from Master. But he doesn't have a buyback, but he does have the Master of the Savage Mace now, so. Look at Draconis, though. <laughs> He's yes, just sitting up there oh. getting a talent point. Pulled right, right there. The Nose will obviously deactivated by that quick rally compel. <laughs> he actually blinked a little bit too far there with that compel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> still going to be fine in the end. Just kind of falls back. Then up the next creep wave in. Back in we go. Again, he has a token alive for another 2 minutes, 20 seconds, really. Obviously, XTDM, I'm sure they uh, they know that they need to make, make a big play here. It's going to be tough, though. Oh, not the big play they're looking for. Magnus missing the stun, unfortunately. And Dakota's going to go back in with some more auto attacks. They're stunning him as much as possible, but uh, Tower is still alive. So he's not going to get the Tower at least just yet. Maybe the next creep wave here. Uh, he do the job. Obviously, the middle lane definitely pushing in complexity's favor. With the melee racks being killed already. So Draconis, uh, they they have to go in here. They they have to go in here. Yeah. I kind of wanted to see just Flux Oof. jump in, ulti, and just go hard. Oh, you know the thing is, Tempest doesn't have a portal key to follow Flux up. Yeah. So that won't even matter. Even if he does blink ulti, you're not going to see the quick response. Yeah, it really goes back to that. I mean, it's it is just kind of awkward to see a Restal Stone Tempest with no portal key. Yeah, not, not really sure. I'm a big fan of the uh, the tablet pickup in general by by Minus this game. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they are going to continue the push by the tower being dead. They have the exposed racks, of course. Most definitely wants that. And Compel going to be used on a Tempest. Tempest ability. Locked out of being pushed all over the place. Hand comes the for giving the force. There's the pull in from a Flux coming out. Tempest just running away. He will be fine. Cataclysmic Assault. Dracona is doing a lot of damage. Down goes Flux. Eruption being channeled in the background. The big eruption. And Aluna's going to fall. But at what cost right there? Down goes Magmas. Tempest is going to ultimate. Not just yet. He does have a Void Talisman, by the way. Good use right there. The Root coming out. Does he have an ultimate? Does he have an ultimate? Maybe. Refreshing Stone. There's the Oh, it's canceled by the Savage Mason. Mid cast. Down he goes. GD well plays. And Complexity is going to take a 2 1. One series lead over Trademark Esports here in this best out of five. The epic series continues here between these two teams. Again, these two teams competing to play Stay Green tomorrow in the championship match. Wow, wow, what a finish. Uh, Draconis yeah. pulling through in the end, man. Haxer, and uh, both times he's played that hard carry role in these matchups. Uh, they've proven successful, so yeah. complexity going a little bit back more towards the roots. Uh, I know for a while they were sort of uh, shunning that that approach and trying to uh, <laughs> go with true. more of the, the stay green style heroes and the bursty, the pebbles, the deadwood. You'd see Haxor and all sorts of things. He's just like, just let me carry, man. Just, just let me right just click. Just let me carry. Just let me farm. <laughs> I mean, let me carry you guys. Yeah. And yeah, no, it's, uh, you're right. They, they are in a sense going back to their roots. Yeah. And, and uh, hey, it's they're up two games to one. Yeah. Obviously.